sometimes the research goes a little too far. Um, I find myself in a situation that I wish I wasn't in. Um, I went to Russia before the collapse of communism to write a book about the Russian mafia. I spent several weeks with the anti-mafia police in St. Petersburg. And um, they were very, they were great guys. They were very friendly to me, but there were many occasions on which I thought I shouldn't be here. For instance, yeah. I'm sitting in this cop's car. There are about five of us in a larder, which is a very small car. <laughs> They're all smoking away and I'm, my health is already in danger. Uh, I'm wearing the, a flak jacket and we were waiting for a, a mafia guy to turn up and we were going to go in and arrest him. At which point we waited about half an hour and one of these cops reaches into his coat and then hands me a huge automatic pistol. And then he said, I said, uh, well, I'm not sure if my travel insurance covers the use of uh, firearms. And he said, Philippe, if the mafia come, they won't ask if you are from BBC. So I took the gun and put it in the back of my trousers and that they all did. And then we went in to arrest this guy. And uh, I have to say, they knocked on the door. And as the door opened, one of them just drop kicked him uh, in the face. So we didn't need the gun. I didn't need the gun. They thought that was very funny. Because then they, <clears throat> they took me down to the firing range and they took my flag jacket and they put it on a target at the end of the firing range and then handed me the gun back and invited me to fire at my own flag jacket, which I duly did. And all the bullets went straight through it. And uh, I said, oh, right. And they said, Philippe, he's a Russian flag jacket. He's no good. The ma mafia all have American flag jackets. <laughs> favorite virtue well um, I'm not sure I have a favorite virtue I, I mean I've got a lot of favorite vices but um, I could name any one of those actually that I gluttony I'm very fond of um, lust obviously um, but favorite virtue um, do you know I can't even think of what they are actually I don't know what the virtues are I mean there, there's a psychologically revealing thing okay um, let me see um, thrift <laughs> My favourite qualities in a man, um, in, well, intelligence, I suppose, and uh, fidelity. Loyal, you know, a, a good loyal friend. I don't have many friends, so you know that that probably accounts for. I've got a very high standard, obviously. You know. um, I, I didn't set out to be a crime writer or anything like that. I um, I wanted to write about the time and the period, and I wanted to understand um, how the what happened happened. And it seemed to me that the best way of doing that was to kind of write a novel that put myself in that, in that situation. Um, and because there was very little information about the time and the period, um, after a while I began to feel a little bit like a detective. And so it seemed to me that um, choosing a detective as my protagonist would be um, probably the best way of, of carrying on. Favourite prose author? Um, well, it changes, but mostly I, I sort of come back to sort of um, the likes of Charles Dickens, um, F. Scott Fitzgerald, um, George Orwell, those, those three. Favourite poet is Philip Larkin, um, very English. A bit misanthropic and a bit miserable. Um, and Shakespeare, because frankly, nearly everything in Shakespeare is poetry anyway, so it just happens to be called drama. Um, I mean, not many people know that a lot of what happens in the Olympics was invented by the Nazis. Um, I mean, for instance, the running of the Olympic flame from Athens 
to wherever was uh, an idea uh, Goebbels had. He thought it was a terrific idea because he thought, well, we have a guy running all the way. It's, it makes Berlin seem like the, the center of Europe. Um, they, um, I mean, the lighting of the Olympic flame as well. This, this was the first time it got such a big, it was made a big deal. Um, and then when I looked into the Olympic flame, I discovered how much corruption there had been involved in all of the different, well, it, you know, can I say this without making it sound bad, but all of the different gas companies, I know that in, when you speak about things in Nazi Germany, you know, you talk about gas and it mm. means something else. But the gas companies were all vying to get the contract for the Olympic flame and it was all, so it was all a racket, it was all money and it was all corruption. And um, I, I thought what fun it would be to write about the German Olympics and to sort of be all the time with a sharp stick just prodding the, the British um, idea of having the Olympics. I did go to Cuba, yeah. I loved Cuba. Yeah, the, pe the people were really wonderful and, in and fascinating and very hospitable and friendly and quite happy, surprisingly, really. I mean, they hate their government, but I mean, they're happy in spite of their government, not because of it. Um, I wanted, um, you know, obviously I thought it would be fun to go to Cuba. I always like to go to the places I'm, I'm writing about. Um, not, so, I mean, yeah, research is funny. You, you have to kind of react to being in a place. I think that's the most important kind of research there is. Some people take it very literally, you know, they've got to find certain things. But I, I, I like to have an emotional reaction to the whole thing. So um, that's, that's why I, I went to Cuba. I don't much like the, uh, the Committee of Public Safety and the French Revolution of Robespierre. And quite like Danton. I think Danton had a bit of a rough deal, really, from Robespierre and Saint-Just. So I don't really like them. Um, mostly, I think I don't like revolutionaries. Um, I think it's interesting how revolutions go wrong uh, and they end up sort of betraying their own principles. So like, you know, 60 years ago, I might have said Castro was a, as a hero, but uh, I mean, you know, events have proved differently. I think he's now a sort of pretty loathsome tyrant, really. So on the whole, I, I loathe um, people who pretend to be making things better for the people and then end up being worse than people like the Ayatollah Khomeini and, I regard myself when I'm as a little bit like a an impressionist painter. Mm. I think of myself as a bit like uh, Georges Seurat. Um, I go and I take, I draw little sketches uh, of places, not picture sketches, but word sketches. And I work at these little sketches to make the place come alive. Um, and you can't do that from, from just in a book. You have to be there. Um, so it's, I, I always look for the little spot of color, the little bit of detail. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is, if you remember we're looking at um, Syrah's pointillisme, mm -hmm. um, what happens is that it, up close, it doesn't mean anything at all. You've got all these little, <laughs> all these little details. Mm -hmm. But when you take 10 or 15 steps back, then all the little spots, the little details, the little facts, then they start to add up and you get an impression of what it was like. And that's all I'm after, really, is, is, uh, is to give an impression. I don't tr kid myself that I'm able to give a photographic sense of reality. All I'm trying to do is recreate an impression in the same way as Surai does, so that when you, you narrow your eyes, uh, you, can, you get that shimmer of a moment in time. Um, oh, this is easy. Um, I've got three, actually. I would dearly love to be able to play almost any musical instrument with great virtue, uh, virtuosity. I would also like to be able to speak uh, a huge variety of um, foreign languages. Since I'm English, I actually speak none. Um, <laughs> they say a man who speaks three languages is trilingual, a man who speaks two is bilingual, and a man who speaks none at all, oh, sorry, speaks one is, is English. Um, so I would dearly love to be able to speak lots and lots of different languages and I reckon with those two um, skills I could sort of go through life um, 
anew, renewed. Keep buggering on. It's um, not mine. It was Winston Churchill's phrase, keep buggering on. It meant um, uh, if all, even if uh, the whole world is against you, you've just got to keep carrying on. But the buggering part is, um, is essential. It means there's a, a tenacity and a doggedness. Um, yeah, well, no, they're just miserable. No, I don't think they keep buggering on. I mean, they, keep, they complain a lot. They keep, complain far too much in order to qualify for the, to, to, to qualify for, to use the phrase, keep buggering on. So that's mine. Pleasure.